Hello and welcome back to Nikki Does. This is a Panda Placer video, uh, the Panda Placer A1, which um, I have a number of videos that are in the queue to come out, but this one was important enough that I wanted to get it out right away. For those of you who are considering or have bought a Panda Placer, spoiler alert is that I really like it and I really like the gent in Canada, who Canada, who is servicing or supporting those. Andrew and I also have had awesome experiences with Leo, the person in in uh, China who is producing this product. Um, what I have here are the five feeder interface boards, and these were shipped with the Panda Placer base kit. I think maybe you can buy it without it for another for like thirty dollars less, but why would you? I don't know that they're even stocking that. And the instructions currently, the Panda Placer docks are a bit loose and a bit light on this because there's been a few version changes. And I wanted to clarify some things because it would make it easier for those of you who decide to get a Panda Placer and to get started. So here we go. Uh, well, the first thing is you have a couple of different components here. You have, and there, I, one wire harness I didn't bring with me down to this video is... Uh, a two pin power harness that goes in here we'll we'll look at that and that's really simple or we'll talk about it the main thing is you have five generally speaking identical boards here plus this little interface board that comes along with it and you have these connectors these cables and um, once you get going this it's probably obvious to all but um, it's worth making a video so the first thing is each of these has an address header on it and again, the documentation currently is a little bit unclear, but I suspect by the time Andrew sees this, he'll bump the documentation a bit. So um, let's just get started. The first thing is that each one of these boards, these are Panda Placer um, feeder controller version 3.0. And they do have uh, their own little microcontroller on them, and they do control up. Uh, 12 servos on there. So 0 through 11 is the address here. The board is addressed 0 through 7. So you could, uh, according to this, you could put 8 times 12. So that's 96 feeders this chain could operate. Um, it comes with 5. So that's a total of 60 feeders. The second board that it comes with is this one, which is the Panda Placer Mini Serial version 2.0. It also has its own little microcontroller on it, and it presents itself as a serial port uh, to USB, USB-C, uh, 19,200 baud N81, and it converts that into probably TTL level. I don't know what voltage, I think 3.3 volt, but don't quote me on that. Serial over here, it does have some LEDs for transmission indication, TX1, RX1 right there. And I believe it also has an LED for power somewhere on there. There it is, five volt power so it probably does uh, do 5 volt. There are some changes I believe in the works from uh, Panda Placer so be aware these are for the versions that I'm stating here. Um, there is an address header jumper as I mentioned and this is currently set to 0 and we go through here let's get them in order. We've got a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, and a four. It's just a binary counting table. Um, and then you have to connect them together. And they just go, I don't know, trunk to tail, I suppose I've heard it called, where just one connects to the next, connects to the next, connects to the next. But um, the way the feeder is, the panda placer is physically laid out, two of these say this one, these two go on the left side of the machine with the serial port connection thing. Well, maybe not. Let's get this correct. The serial port connection on the left side back because this USB then goes over to a beautifully integrated hub that's on the Panda Placer main motion control board. So you don't have 16,000 USB wires going back to your computer for whatever reason. So this connects up to the back of the Panda Placer where the motion control board is mounted. Then the first one the second one, and you'll want to verify your addresses are set properly, um, which these are not. So let's fix that. 
and each of these gets now i know this is not electronical or configurational but um, each of these gets a t-nut a spacer a washer and a screw and then each of these slide into the 20 millimeter speed rail that the whole panda placer is made of so you're going to make one of these and this is as wide as my shot gets let's go up a little bit so you're going to make one of these which that is going to go on the left side and that'll be address zero one then you'll take address two, which this should be, and it is, and you'll run this across here, across the front of the panda placer, and you'll, you can put up to 12 feeders in the front, and then you'll take two more of these and you'll attach them together, and they'll go over here on the right side of the panda placer. And of course, these jumper wires connect at these uh, right angle corners here. So, it's up to you which way you turn the jumper wire. There's no um, key pin missing. You can flip them upside down or not. And I think if you were to flip them upside down, bad things would happen. So this is up to you, being a detail-oriented individual, to plug these in properly. Now, to plug these in correctly. Don't plug them in improperly. Plug them in correctly. So um, they did label the... Um, with silk here, they label what's on it. I, I suppose maybe I'd take a little bit issue with the wire coloring because there's ground over here on the the top side of your screen on this side. And if we flip it over, you have ground over here on the top this side, 24 volt and ground on the outside. TX is in the middle, 24 volt ground on the outside. TX is in the RX is in the middle. Um, so what that turns out is if you flip this over, it wouldn't really kill anything. You just your TX and RX wouldn't work. So that's pretty cool. So we've got a, a red and a white. So let's just make the red the TX um, all the time. So here we go, TX, red. We're going to plug that one in here. And then we come over here and we've got, on this side, we're going to want RX to be red there. And we plug that in. And the way it should work out is that these wire colors would be just like that, right? So TX to RX, 24 volt on the one side, ground on the other side, TX and RX in the middle. So everything's fine. So uh, I hadn't looked at this before the video. I hadn't looked at the pin details, to be honest. So um, the fact it is quite smart that you could flip them over and not destroy anything, but it's a little bit unfortunate that you flip them over and it fits and there's really no kind of confirmation that there's a pin one or not. So um, yeah, just you have to pay attention part of life. So um, we're going to then just plug this back together uh, the correct way, like this. And now I would mount these into the machine like this, like this, like this. We'd have another jumper over here. Now the last thing you have to do is you have to make sure that you also plug in the power for this because the feeders can't run off of USB-C. There's no um, power delivery setup going on here there's not a uh, hundred watts coming through so there's a separate connector here and that connector let's get tight here is labeled 24 volts in uh, there we go 24 volt ground 24 volt in and um, that's I assume 24 volt on the left ground on the right and then 24 volt in is just the name of the jumper or the connector there's another one down here 24 volt ground uh, 24 volt in. I'm assuming that those are completely identical. Just this one is tied to this side connector and this one is tied to this side connector. So if I uh, measure the resistance between 24 volt here and here and, and ground here and here, I imagine I would get um, continuity there as I would from end to end on this thing. So you have to plug in a jumper to here and then that goes into one of the connectors. Well, there are actually two into the connectors on the motion control, the main board. The instructions will tell you to plug that into one of the five volt connectors, but this must be plugged into the 24 volt connector. Do not mess that one up. And that is if you have the version 3.0, which I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you will not have something less than 3.0. Um, so just keep that in mind. I think there are, I, a little bird told me there may be some new boards coming out soon, so be aware that this could change again. But that is the basics of how to connect this up. Um, I hope 
this helps and if you have further questions on the panda placer a1 or the feeder system or printing the feeder parts which i'm doing right now in mass uh, please do reach out if you want a particular video on a particular subject let me know and i'll expedite that one too as always thanks for watching please do subscribe to my channel because it lets me know that you care thanks for watching bye